Well, hi, welcome back. Um, I want to talk a little bit on a video about what was actually brought to my attention by uh, one of the mentors. Uh, went right over my head because I'm actively involved with the YouTube channel, trying to bring some points of interest uh, that might be beneficial to our subscribers. So I was, you know, I failed in terms of uh, clarity from separation, lack of separation. And that was, it was brought back to my attention about how dangerous anything is when it's out of balance. Now, uh, of course, it can be too much or too little, but anything that's out of balance is potentially a dangerous situation. Um, what happened was I, I coined a phrase a, a couple of weeks ago, and it went along the lines of um, information overload and quicksand share at least one common trait and that is if you spend too much of your time determining how deep they go by the time you discover that you realize you're already stuck in it and you're not going anywhere uh, the point that was brought out to me, it seems that the more, I would say, in tune with what is actually going on, the more you dig, the more you know. So the people with the, with the uh, I, I would say, um, higher intelligence into what's really happening, the hoaxes that we're all suffering from right now, it's those people in particular that this video goes out to and uh, that's a high portion of at least my subscribers because to various degrees they are informed and some of them are quite informed and they even have their own blog sites and their, their own video you know YouTube channels and so on this message particularly goes out to those individuals and at this late stage in the game, uh, it's, it's a question that everybody's going to have to ask themselves. It's a subjective question where one answer isn't right for everybody. There's probably going to be to varying stages a different answer for each individual. But what I'm asking you to ponder, and ponder unbiasedly, because this is a very important decision, look at yourself only. Understand at this late stage that every hour you spend whatever it is you do whether it's blogging videos talking to your friends whatever it is on this same subject this late in the game trying to convince the same people the same people that keep closing doors or deleting emails that you try to send to help at this late stage of the game every hour that you spend doing this everything changes okay that's like I say flexibility everything changes now is past the time to start recognizing every hour you spend doing that on deaf ears is one hour less you have on your own plan for your own family your loved ones for yourself for your safety I want you to really consider that because um, it's a very important point and I see a lot of the people that I, uh, I personally know that have websites or uh, a lot of people that are fairly knowledgeable about this are lacking in their own plan. This isn't three years ago and none of us have the same time flexibility to do what we need to do to impl implement what we need to do as we did years ago. That's only common sense. Over the past five, six months, a lot of the most popular YouTube channels and a lot of the most popular blogs have kind of tossed it in for now. Listen to me, there's a reason for that. Some of the most high-ranking sites and blogs have recently pulled the plug on their own. Some were done by YouTube, 
Some were actually putting out phrases, uh, for example, like, it's time to take care more of my own plan. I've tried. I'm getting out to hundreds of thousands of people, but there's no actions being formed. It's time for me to look after what I need to for my own family and finish off my own plan. In other words, things have escalated. And I want to point out at least what the mentors are feeling. And we're not putting too much research into it because it's that late stage. We already know this thing's a hoax. Again, you don't have to reconfirm it a hundred times. However, there are reasons for that. And there's reasons why all, uh, there's reasons for why all of a sudden YouTube's been canceling some of the most popular stations and certainly uh, at least shadow banning some of the middle size channels such as ours. We were approaching a million views. We would have been well over a million views. A few weeks ago we discovered we were also being shadow banned, which does not anger me. I want you guys to understand that. If anything, we're looking at it like a badge of honor, a purple heart. Hey, we suffered a little bit of injury for the betterment of trying to spread truth to our subscribers. Anybody who's interested in not falling behind and wants to stay current on this information, we've said many times. Finally, just click on to our BitChute channel where they're not shadow banning, and you're going to get all the videos and all the information that we feel pertinent to share. However, we're not dwelling much more on this ridiculous hoax of a, of a virus, of an epidemic. And uh, it's, it is a pandemic. It's everywhere. But pandemic is geographic. Epidemic is what describes severity and disease. And they're misusing words. People go along with it because I will agree, if you don't really understand the meaning of words, a pandemic sounds very threatening. All it is is a geographic term. But anyway, I want to make it clear, there is a reason for some of the most popular channels uh, going off and a reason for YouTube now all of a sudden being very comfortable with canceling anything they choose. And that is, quite simply, they've reached a point where they're comfortable in the percentages that they have indoctrinated to do so. Let me explain a little bit further, but I have to go back a little bit in history to do it. Some of this is going to sound new, even to the more seasoned um, subscriber in terms of this, but I need to start back about 15, 20 years ago. It'll just take a moment. I know a large percentage of my viewers may even be too young, actually, to even know what I'm talking about, but years ago, about two decades ago, a electronic equipment, piece of equipment, came out uh, for use in cars, and General Motors termed it as OnStar. This was cleverly marketed as a great means of safety, technology and safety, and in fact it was. If you were stuck or you had a flat or uh, you couldn't start the car or ran out of gas, whatever uh, needed a tow truck, I guess, or some help. You would be able to push one button on the on uh, right where usually the mirror was. There was a little button there with a, a little green button, I think, there for help, and it was on star. And that would get you in touch with a assistance where there was operators uh, handling where you were geographically, and they knew everything because of the chip that was put in the car. See, so the car was being chipped. Okay, that's the key point you need to understand for, for the viewers that are too young to understand this. Going back about 15 years now, the people who at least for the most part had uh, their hands in that was a company named DARPA, much the same as Internet. And these are military companies, okay? You need to realize this to begin with. Now, they sold it to General Motors on the emphasis about wouldn't it be wonderful if in every car there was technology that if the owner did not pay their monthly bills, the financing on the car, because everything's bought finance, right? 
Wouldn't it be wonderful if A, we could lock them out, B, we can prevent the motor from starting, C, we can give you the geographic coordinates so you know where to send the tow truck to impound it and nothing happens to the vehicle, no destruction from angry customers, no abuse. General Motors, rightfully so, said that is fantastic. Where do we sign? Because it was almost nothing for them to do this. They would have the advertising rights to use it in commercials. Go back uh, if any of you want further information. And I'm sure if you Google OnStar commercials, you'll find, you know, where the, the pregnant woman's, you know, or, or, or the, you know, the, the, is, is waiting for the tow truck driver in a snowstorm. I even remember some of them. And it's like you could see in her eyes, he looks like her hero with the red lights of the tow truck. Very ingenious, uh, ingenious advertising. There's no question about that. However, the deeper program was they were testing a tracking device. Okay, that's what I want the listeners to understand. That's the bottom line. Fast forwarding, by what I mean, nothing changes but technology and ways of doing things. It's because the information is, is truly that easy to find about the disadvantages and the zero benefits of using an over-the-loop, over-the-ear loop mask, which you see 85% of the population or more using them, whether it's mandatory or not. That only goes to show you how much stronger this information is being spread across their medias. Uh, this equates to, have you ever been in a speech and there's a, just a few thousand people or a few hundred and the speaker goes, by a show of hands, show me who agrees or show me who disagrees. And the, the people actually, you know, and you could, oh, okay, there's about 30, 40. Well, okay. With today's surveillance systems all over the world and everything is surveillance to the max. My question is, how hard is it for them to run percentage numbers by just having the computer check off, yes, there's a mask, no, there isn't. They're going to find out 85% roughly or more are behind masks. Irrelevant if they believe it's good or not, or it helps or not. 85% more or less are behind the masks. What I want you to take away from this is... This is why now they're, I say they're comfortable. They've reached a point that they know, more or less, without interference, randomly doing it without disturbing anybody, all done electronically, who has been indoctrinated into listening to their media versus who has not been indoctrinated. Because the information's available for everyone. We've proven that beyond a shadow of a doubt on uh, one of our last YouTubes. And that was go to any drugstore, pick up a box of over the ear loop masks, a box of 50, a box of 100 of them. And like we've shown you right from uh, one that, several that we did, you'll see right there, it says right in the warnings. It is absolutely defenseless. It's useless against COVID-19, coronavirus, or any disease. Okay? It's not a respirator. It's an over-the-ear loop mask. Signed for dust, paint, those type of things. Now, what it does do, obviously, my subscribers know, it drastically re re reduces your oxygen intake and massively increases your carbon dioxide intake because you're not exiting. It's not exiting the mask. You're rebreathing it. It does zero prevention from either you spreading a disease or you receiving a disease. But when 85% of the people are wearing it, whether they believe in it or not, it shows them who's been indoctrinated. You could be indoctrinated by ignorance. In other words, believing this is true. Or you can be, and many people, this slips by them, be indoctrinated by 
going along with it and not wanting to be shamed or not wanting to cause problems or just it's easier to wear it or I have to get into the groceries. But in any event, make no mistake, you're witnessing another worldwide, shall we say, check to determine the ratios. Now they've determined the ratios are high enough. They are now comfortable with taking other major steps, which includes banning, which is causing some of the more informed blogs to say, we'll catch you on the other side. Because you see, by everybody just forwarding more information and more of the same type of information on emails, Describe to me how that makes you the least bit more free or the least bit more beneficial to defend yourself when everybody that we're fighting owns all the airwaves we're communicating over. And at any time, which they're starting to exercise now by canceling, you know, some of the most popular YouTube channels, right? They're starting to exercise that benefit of owning the very same airwaves very same means of communication that if they wanted to shut off would not even allow me to get this out to you or anybody else. So you need to really understand the depth and severity of this about not only understanding where we are, not falling into the trap of information overload. And this is what we see happening some of our most informed describers, uh, subscribers, excuse me. And I want to, before closing this video off, I want to make sure you understand that last part because um, no matter how big you make a channel or no matter how much you try to spread good word, truth, whatever, um, we've discussed in many past blogs and posts I've done and videos and many other people have brought this up also but if they own the airwaves and they can literally shut it off at any time at their total discretion doesn't matter if you have five subscribers or people reading your information or 50 million or a billion it's irrelevant because when you get whacked off at the knees, you get whacked off at the knees. So what I'm saying is not that, well, really, technology is, is neutral de in determining whether it's good technology or bad. It's, it's the wielder of the technology which determines that. Well, look who owns the various airwaves and the various media channels. That's my case. It's as simple as showing people the instructions off an ear loop mass package. There is no need for any more debate after it. If not, use your free will, make the decision, but you take the consequences of the decision your free will allowed you to make. So rounding the corner and heading for home, I want to get this point across to my subscribers that are reasonably informed do not get carried away and put the time into your own plan B at this late stage uh, are you growing things are you stalking various things are you having a backup source solar a generator are you maybe perhaps having a tank of diesel underground and using a diesel vehicle instead of a gasoline vehicle are you taking one of a multitude of precautions or are you subconsciously by your own good will trying to help everybody else that's slamming a door in your face remember every hour you spend there is one hour less and I want to close with a thought anybody who's ever flown at least while planes still are at the 10% or less ratio that they are Anybody who's ever flown during the safety speech that the uh, flight attendant is making, when they get to the point, 
since everybody's on this hoopla about masks, when they get to the point of the safety instructions about should the oxygen masks fall, you know how you pull the little shock cord and everything? What's the first thing the, inf the person giving the information in the lecture on the safety equipment says? They always say, upon disbursement, put on and start your mask first, and then attend to your children. Why is that? Because, like Wayne Dyer said and coined the term, you can't get sick enough to help them get better one person. You can't get sick enough to make one person better on this planet. You have to help yourself first in order to keep helping others. And if you haven't taken the precautions or because of your good nature began falling behind all because of your endeavors to inform the others, all I'm suggesting, all the mentors are suggesting is we've seen a lot of people go into a fair stage of procrastination about their own plan and doing it. So we just want to make sure, as I said in the beginning of this video, don't find how deep the quicksand is because you're liable to be stuck in it and realize you ain't going nowhere. I hope this information helped a little bit and uh, it's only through the mentors bringing it up to me and several other subscribers personally emailing me on specific thoughts about what would be the next thing to do and also, in particular, a lot of subscribers uh, really hurt by falling on such deaf ears from family and loved ones. This is about the best way I could offer assistance on answering those various points of view. So thank you so much for spending a little bit of time together with me. And it's old Barry and DR. And soon enough, we'll be hitting the roads again in the backcountry. And until then, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>